Hello Life Group, this is Richard and I'm bringing to you the Break It Down video today for our Life Group discussion. This last Sunday, we finished our series that we've been talking about called Taking Ground. And in Taking Ground, God has spoken to us so many things. And as we come to the end of this series, we want to just talk about how to keep that which God has spoken to us. I want to remind us of a scripture that was very key at the very beginning. In Deuteronomy 1, the Lord said to, to uh, the Lord, this is Moses saying, that the Lord God said to us at Horeb, you've stayed long enough at this mountain. Break, camp, and advance. And in verse 8, he says, see, I've given you this land. Go in and take possession of the land that the Lord swore he would give to your fathers. And so Israel, as we've seen, children of Israel, they went through uh, the whole journey of conquering all the land that the Lord had promised them. And today, my, my message, my main message is to tell us that God has made a way for us not only to be partakers of his promises, but also to be keepers of those promises. How do we not stop being just those who receive the promises of God, but keep them? Because as we know it in the journey of the children of Israel, there were times when, because of their, of their sinful nature, they were actually taken out of their land and taken into their a land of captivity. They left the promise of God. I believe God wants us to be keepers of his promises, that everything he has given us, we will keep it. In Joshua 23, the Bible says that, uh, Joshua said that after a long time, had passed the Lord, had given Israel rest from their enemies. And then Joshua told them, remember how I have allotted as an inheritance for your tribes all the land of the nations that remain, um, the nations I conquered between the Jordan and the Mediterranean. Um, and then he told them about the promises and how God had been faithful. Three things I see from Josh Joshua's last speech to the children of Israel. One, he told them um, that God is faithful. God fulfilled all of his promises. In Joshua 23, 14, he says, Now I'm about to go the way of all the earth, but you know it in, with all your heart and soul that not one of the good promises the Lord your God gave you has failed. Every promise has been fulfilled. Not one has failed. God is a faithful God. And I believe that the first thing God wants us to remember is what did he tell us from the very beginning. Because God's promises are what we hold on to, to hold on to the land, the promise of God. See, God's word is, that, is like our lives. It's like the, the, the authentication, the document uh, that gives us the right to take position of that which God has given us. Is it our homes, our marriage, our work? We need to have a word of God. We need to have the promises of God that God spoke over us. And those promises become our rallying point, become our anchor, become what pushes us to keep believing that what God promised he will fulfill. And where, where we are, we are not there because of, uh, of any other reason apart from the fact that God, it would be came from the promise of God. Paul told Timothy, Timothy, my son, in 1 Timothy 1, 18 to 19, in accordance to the pro prophecies previously spoken or made concerning you, that by them you will fight the good fight, that you will wage a good war. I believe that every word of God that God gives us is a, is a true word. It's, it's a word that remains, but it begins to be our anchor. It's what we hold on to. It's what we believe and say, yes, this is what God said. I'm going to walk in it. I'm going to believe that God has done it and, and, that, and that God will fulfill every promise of his word. So the question I have for us is, what, what has God spoken over your life? Do you know what God has spoken over your life? Then the other thing that I see Joshua urging the children of Israel is please remember to fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity. You know, many people fear man more than God. Many people are would rather ob obey man than God. But Joshua told them, if you're going to stay in this land, told them in Joshua 24, 14, says, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him 
in sincerity and truth and do away with, all, with the gods which your fathers and served beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if it's disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose yourself for you, yourselves today whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served, which were beyond the Euphrates River, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house who serve the Lord, choose today to serve the Lord. Choose to say, God, God is my God and I'm going to serve him sincerely. The Bible says in Psalm 25 that, that who is the person who fears the Lord? He will instruct in the way he should choose. His soul will dwell in prosperity and his descendants will inherit the land. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him and he will make them know his covenant. My eyes are continually toward the Lord for he will rescue me. He will rescue my feet from the net. So the question I have, who is God to you? Because when we know who God is to us, we will definitely live a life that serves him, that honors him. And then finally today for our discussion, keep in covenant with God. And after Joshua had done everything, the Bible says in verse 24 of Joshua 24, and the people said to Joshua, yes, indeed we will serve the Lord our God and obey his voice. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and and made for them a statute, an ordinance in Shechem. And then Joshua did, you know, wrote the whole covenant in, in, in the book of the law. And I'll tell you something that God wants to remind us that our relationship with him, um, uh, ultimately God desires that we grow in our relationship with him. Because it's the relationship that guarantees that we will stay in everything God has already given us. You see, God doesn't want just to give us things and throw things at us. He wants to develop a relationship with him. And God's relationship with us is through something called covenant. The covenant says, God says, God guarantees that I'll, you, I'll be your God, you'll be my people. And First Peter 2 says that, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. For you once were not a people, but now you are people of God. Uh, you had not received mercy, but now you've received mercy. My final question to ask is, where is God's place in my life? May God bless you as you continue in the discussions today in the life group.